Twilight Syndrome. It's an incredibly intriguing series of games that start young high schoolers as they investigate rumors of paranormal phenomenon. And the rumors are often based on real life urban legends. And to make things really interesting, the cases that these young people investigate often make them realize things about themselves or involve themselves in some kind of way. And they're incredibly well told stories that unlike a lot of other horror games, really nail tension. These games can build up to a confrontation like it's nobody's business, to the point that there is rarely, if any, any actual supernatural happening appearing on screen. But you feel it, you are right there with the people investigating, and as they get more and more tense, so do you. And that's an incredible feat for games that are just glorified walking simulators. These almost 30 year old pieces of media do things with storytelling in games that modern games could learn a lot from, and just experiencing them is an event and an incredibly immersive one. So sit back and relax, and let me explain the plot of Twilight Syndrome, Sansaku Hen, aka Search. Sometimes following the events in the music room, we catch up with Yukari as she catches up with her teacher. As she wants to talk to him since they haven't been spending a lot of time together lately. Yukari is apparently getting on his nerves and he's tired of her acting like a child, which she is and he's a pedo. And the whole situation is eerily familiar to the previous investigation. Yukari's day isn't getting any better, as she comes home and is immediately confronted and scolded by her mother about an enormous amount of cash she apparently keeps in her room. Her mother calls her father and begs him to talk to her, which she apparently refuses, which naturally upsets Yukari. She tries to call Chisato, but she isn't home due to having school activities. She contemplates calling Mr. Kitamura, her teacher, but nah. And then finally she calls Mika, and I get the sense that she doesn't do that too often, or that they are really friends at all, because Mika is very excited that she did call, and she can't quite believe it. Incidentally, Mika has something she wants to talk about, a rumor, so they agree to meet up at the cafe, and Chisato also shows up there. While Mika goes to the counter to order them food because Yukari didn't eat dinner at home, there is a very real moment where Yukari, being in the company of the one person on earth that she trusts, confides in Chisato about what just happened with her parents earlier. And just as Mika returns to the table, she clamps up and the conversation ends, and her very firmly planted guard comes back up, as well as her tough attitude. Mika has learned of a rumor about a train station where a lot of people have died under mysterious circumstances, and that someone perished there quite recently, and might still be around in their spectral form a little longer. They make their way there and then jump the fence and enter the closed station and start walking around. They've bought the camera that they used at the park and they take picture in the bathroom and then move to the other bathroom and take another but are then spooked by something and quickly exit. They see a figure and they run after her but as they follow her down to the train platform she vanishes into thin air. The girls start bickering about what to do and Mika falls onto the track and then despite the station being closed for the night due to the trains not running anymore a train comes barreling towards her. She somehow survives but is obviously distraught, especially since it seems like someone pushed her and no one else was there except the three of them. They all get into a heated argument about this and it ends with Mika telling them to go home and leave her alone, to which Chisato and Yukari comply with. As they go, Mika hears the phone ring on the platform and picks it up. It's just gibberish and then the call cuts out. Her pager then goes off and she uses the phone from there to call the number on it. And then the gibberish from before resumes where it left off. And Mika realizes it's not gibberish. It's someone who died here on the tracks and they're describing being in pieces and apologizing to whoever they think they're calling because they're gonna be late for their meeting. And then a train is heard from the call and then the thud and then it cuts out again. 
The phone rings again, and the person pleadingly asks Mika to wait so that they can meet up like they agreed to, but then the phone call cut, cuts out again. Mika freaks out and runs off, and as she does, the phone rings again. She runs up the stairs, but somehow gets turned around and ends up right back at the foot of them. Meanwhile, Yukari and Chisato are on their way home when Chisato, the moral glue of the group, manages to convince Yukari to head back and see how Mika is doing. And they do, and they all apologize to each other and continue their investigation. After encountering a strange drunk ghost that waves at them and then disappears, they find the shrine dedicated to the station's latest victim, a little boy, and they buy him a bottle of juice and place it at his memorial. The boy doesn't appear to them, so they wander around some more to look for him and possibly other strange phenomena, and they definitely find that last thing. There is a sign to a platform that doesn't exist, and the platform number just so happens to be 4, which is a number often associated with death in Japanese folklore. They also see the boy heading towards the platform, and as they descend to the platform itself, the air gets thick and foggy, and they run into a strange conductor, who informs them that the last train is coming. Up until now, there have been small clues that hinted at the fact that not every ghost is here because they died here, but that they congregate here for some reason. They're probably here because the last train going to Yuyami Guaka, which could translate to something like Dusk Hill, is the train that is supposed to take them to the afterlife, and it departs right here from the death platform which doesn't exist. And the fuck? The fuck is probably ghosts, and a lot of them. Mika wants to go on the train, but the others won't let her, as they seem to be more aware of its unnatural state and its destination not existent. And as the train departs without Mika on it, it, along with the platform itself and the conductor, fades away and vanishes into thin air. And the girls discover that they're actually standing in the middle of a graveyard that is next to the station itself. The next day they gather to take a look at the photos they took, and they see that in the bathroom where they got startled in the beginning, there is definitely a pair of ghostly hands, but more interesting, in the last picture they took on the death platform, they see that the thick fog was indeed something, it was dozens if not hundreds of ghosts, including the woman and the little boy they followed around, boarding the train heading for Dusk Hill. I don't know why, but I think this story might have inspired an urban legend of its own. Two Chan users stuck at Kisaragi station. In the legend, an anonymous user, later identifying herself as Hasumi, reaches out to users in a thread on Two Chan, a once popular forum, and says that she was on her way home and that she's now stranded at a station that she doesn't know, Kisaragi station. The story unfolds as she updates the thread periodically, as she tries to find her way out of the station and interacts with two other users on the forum, and it ends with her final message, saying that her battery is low, but that she sees a car, and that she's going to try and hitch a ride, and then she's never heard from ever again. I don't know why, but this story reminds me of this investigation, and it happened just 8 years after the release of this game, which by all accounts was fairly popular in Japan, despite not selling too well from my understanding. 